Welcome my friends. I'm so excited because in this video we get to talk about discrete probability distributions. So let's go ahead and get started. Recall that quantitative variables can be broken into either discrete or continuous variables. Discrete variables, which are the focus of this chapter, can take on only certain values on the number line, typically the whole numbers. Continuous variables, on the other hand, are not restricted to certain values on the number line, meaning that whole numbers and decimals are allowed. In this chapter, we talk about discrete probability distributions, and a probability distribution describes how likely all the values of a variable are to occur. Now, in the previous chapter, we weren't dealing with statistical distributions. When we found probabilities, we would oftentimes write probability statements in terms of the events that we had, such as the probability of A, the probability of B, the probability of A or B, the probability of A given B, etc. But now since we're dealing with a statistical distribution, we're going to use inequality signs to indicate which values we are interested in finding the probability of. Typically, the letter that we're going to use to represent our variable is going to be x. So we might have something like the probability that our variable x is equal to 0, or the probability that x is less than 3, or greater than or equal to 1, or anything along these lines. It's extremely important that you are able to translate a question into a probability statement like those listed above. Because it's so important to be able to translate into the correct probability statement, here's an example of a number of the different probability statements that you might have, and some of the wording that might come along with that. There are in general five different probability statement types that you might encounter in this class related to a discrete variable x. We're going to use the example of two, but of course you could use other numbers. One thing you could be asked for is to find the probability that your variable is exactly equal to some number, such as equal to 2. In that case, our probability statement would be the probability that our variable x is equal to 2. You could also be asked the probability that your variable is greater than or equal to some value, such as 2. We represent this by a greater than or equal to sign in our probability statement. You could also see this described as at least 2. This would include any of the values that are 2 or larger. You could also be asked the probability that x is strictly greater than 2, sometimes described as more than 2. This would be represented by a greater than sign without the equal to portion. So now the value of 2 would not be included. We only want the values that are greater than 2, so that would include 3, 4, 5, or any value greater than 2. We could also be asked less than probabilities, such as the probability that our variable is less than or equal to 2, or some other value. You might see this described as at most 2, and that would be represented by a less than or equal to sign in our probability statement. And finally, we could have the probability that x is strictly less than some value, such as 2, which you might see described as fewer than 2. We represent this by a less than sign, and this would not include the value 2, only the values smaller than 2. You could be asked additional questions, such as the probability that our variable is between two values, but these are the five most common cases. Let's look at an example of a discrete probability distribution. Let's let our variable x represent the number of phone calls received by the financial aid office between 8 and 9 am. Here is what a discrete probability distribution will look like. We will have the possible values of our variable in the first column, and the probabilities in the second column. Apparently, this financial aid office receives anywhere from 0 to 3 calls in this one hour period, and we have these corresponding probabilities. The most common case is that they receive no calls, with a 70% probability. The least common case is that they receive 3 calls, with a 3% probability. Note that the number of calls received is a discrete variable. There are a finite number of countable outcomes, and we don't have all the decimals in between as possibilities. We can only receive either 0, 1, 2, or 3 calls. We might be asked a few probability questions, such as, what is the probability of receiving exactly 2 calls between 8 and 9 am? The probability statement associated with this question would be the probability that our variable x is equal to 2. And if we look at the table, we see that the answer is 0 0.07. There is a 7% chance that they receive 2 calls between the hours of 8 and 9 am. Let's look at another question. What is the probability of receiving at least one call between 8 and 9 am? Well, as I mentioned earlier, at least is the same thing as greater than or equal to. So we are asked for the probability that our variable x is greater than or equal to 1. To find the probability, we can add up all the probabilities that are associated with calls that are 1 or more. 
This would include 0 0.2, 0 0.07, and 0 0.03, which adds up to 0 0.3. There's a 30% chance of receiving at least one call between the hours of 8 and 9 a.m. Sometimes you might want to find the mean of a discrete probability distribution. This is oftentimes called the expected value. To find the expected value or mean of a discrete probability distribution, all you need to do is take each x value and multiply by the corresponding p of x value and then add all the values together. In formula form, we say that to find mu, we can take the sum of x times p of x. What that looks like in this example is taking each number of calls and multiplying by the corresponding probability and adding them all together. So we have 0 times 0 0.7 plus 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.07, plus 3 times 0 0.03, which is equal to 0 0.43. On average, this financial aid office receives about 0 0.43 calls within the hours of 8 and 9 a.m. Now, of course, you can't receive 0 0.43 calls in an hour, but the expected value or mean doesn't have to be one of the possible values of your variable. You might view this number as meaning that, on average, this financial aid office receives anywhere from 0 to 1 calls in the 1 hour period from 8 to 9 a.m. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say you're playing the lottery and there is a 99.9% .9 chance that you win $0 and a 0.1% chance that you win $1,000. How much money could you expect to win on average from playing this lottery? Well, that's the same thing as asking what is the expected value or the mean. We can find the answer by taking each lottery prize winnings and multiplying by the corresponding probability, then adding our answers together. We get 0 times 0 0.999 plus 1000 times 0 0.001, which is equal to 1. One thing that I forgot to mention is that all the probabilities in a discrete probability distribution must add up to 1. So if you add up all the probabilities for the numbers of calls, you will notice that all these numbers add up to 1, which is the same for the lottery prize winnings. Let's look at some examples of discrete distributions as they apply to games of chance and business. First, we have a game of chance. Suppose a deck contains 10 shuffled cards. The cards consist of the numbers 1 through 9 and the king of clubs. You are playing a game where you're going to draw one card. If the card is an even number, you're going to win $2. If the card is an odd number, you're going to lose $5. If you end up drawing the king of clubs, you're going to win $10 create a discrete probability distribution to model this situation. We would assume that our variable x is how much money that you win, based on which card that you draw. You could either draw an even card, an odd card, or the king of clubs, and based on which card that you draw, you will win a different amount of money. If you draw an even card, you're going to be winning $2. If you draw an odd card, you're going to be losing $5. If you end up drawing the king of clubs, you're going to be winning $10. Next, we need to find the probability of each of these events. There are four cards that are even, either the 2, 4, 6, or the 8, and that is 4 out of the total of 10 possible cards. If we assume that we have an equal chance of choosing any of the 10 cards, we can say that the probability that you draw an even card is 4 out of 10. As for the odds, there are 5 of those, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, so there is a 5 out of 10 chance that you draw an odd card. The chance that you draw the king of clubs is going to be 1 out of 10. There is one king of clubs out of the 10 cards. What is the probability that you make money from playing this game a single time? Well, that's the same thing as saying what is the probability that our value of x is greater than 0? Well, there are two outcomes where your winnings are greater than 0, when you draw an even card or when you draw the king of clubs. So the probability can be found by adding those two probabilities together. 4 out of 10 plus 1 out of 10 is 5 out of 10, or 50%. There is a 50% chance that you win money from playing this game a single time. In the long run, can you expect to make money if you play this game over and over? Well, that's the same thing as asking for the expected value, or the mean. To find the mean, we can take each winnings and multiply by the corresponding probability, then add all of the values together. We get 2 times 4 out of 10 plus negative 5 times 5 out of 10 plus 10 times 1 out of 10 which is equal to negative 70 cents. You can expect to lose about 70 cents on average if you play this game many times. Here's an example related to business for you to try. A company sells cameras and makes a profit of $300 per camera. The purchase comes with a guarantee that if the camera breaks in the first two years after purchase, it will be replaced for free. Replacing a camera costs the company $500. 
Suppose 5% of the camera sold need to be replaced once, and 2% need to be replaced twice. Create a discrete probability distribution that models the profit of the company depending on the number of replacements. So apparently they will not replace it a third time. They will only need to replace it up to two times. So here we have the number of replacements, which will be either 0, 1, or 2. And then we will need to figure out you know, how much profit we're going to make for each of those cases. Keep in mind that profit is going to be the you know, revenue that is taken in from the sale of the camera minus the possible cost that there is going to be for um, replacing this camera, which is basically $500 for each replacement. So go ahead and see if you can fill in this table, and I will be back with you in just a minute. All right, so hopefully you've given that a shot. So if you have zero replacements, then the profit is going to simply be the $300 that you make for the sale of the camera. So we're gonna have $300 of profit in the case that we have zero replacements. Now, if we have one replacement, we still made that initial $300, but now we have to pay out $500. So the net of that is going to be, well, 300 minus 500, which is negative 200. We'll actually have a negative profit if we have to replace this thing one time. If we have to have two replacements, then we're actually going to have a profit of negative 700. That's 300 minus 500 minus another 500. Now we need to think about the probabilities. Well, let's say that 5% of the cameras need to be replaced once, so that probability will be 0.05. 2% need to be replaced twice, so that one will be 0.02. .02. The remaining probability must be 0.93, so that the three probabilities add up to 1. All right, there's just one more part for you to try, which asks us to find the company's true profit per camera sold when the warranty is considered. So this is basically a fancy way of asking for what the expected value is. So go ahead and take each profit and multiply by the corresponding P of X, and then add all the numbers together, and that will be your mean. All right, let's look at one last example. Suppose you are playing a game which involves tossing a coin until the first heads is flipped. You win $1 if the first heads is flipped on the very first flip, $2 if the heads is flipped on the second flip, $4 if the first heads is flipped on the third flip, 8 if it's on the fourth flip, etc. And we want to create a discrete probability distribution to model this game. So we could have our very first heads flipped could happen on the very first flip, or the second flip, or the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or this really kind of continues forever. Because theoretically, you could continue to flip tails forever, and then eventually have a heads right at the end, right? So you could you could flip heads, you could flip tails, you know, 100 times, and then have the 101st flip be heads. Theoretically, that's possible. How likely is it? Pretty unlikely, but it could happen. So let's go ahead and see if we can fill out this distribution. So the profit that you're going to have if you flip heads on the very first flip is going to be $1. That's what they say right here. You will win $1 if the first heads is flipped on the very first flip. And the chance of that happening is one half. There's a 50% chance that the very first flip is heads. If the very first heads is flipped on the second flip, then you're actually going to win $2, which is what they say right here. You're going to double your money. But the chance of this happening is only going to be one out of four. Why is that the case? Well, if your very first heads is flipped on the second flip, well, then that entails that you must have flipped tails first and then flipped heads. And the chance of flipping tails and then heads is really just one half times one half or one quarter. Or what about the chance that you have your first heads on the third flip? Well, then you're going to be doubling your money again, which would be up to $4. And now the chance of that happening is only one eighth. Because if your first heads flipped is on the third flip, that means you, you must have flipped two tails first. So your sequence is tails, tails, heads. And the chance of tails, tails, heads is one half times one half times one half, which would come to one eighth. And this pattern is going to continue. You'll have eight and one out of 16, 16 and one out of 32, 32, one out of 64, et cetera, et cetera. And this really continues forever. So the question for you is, what is the maximum amount of money that you would pay to play this game? And traditionally, to answer a question like this, you would calculate the expected value. But something very interesting is going to happen if we try to calculate the expected value. To find the expected value, we take each profit and multiply by the corresponding probability. So we have 1 times 1 half, plus 2 times 1 quarter, plus 4 times 1 eighth, etc., etc., etc. And if you simplify each of these, all of them simplify to 1 half. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. 2 times 1 fourth is 2 fourths or 1 half. 4 times 1 eighth is 1 half. So this will just continue forever and forever and forever. And this technically never ends. So really, the expected value is infinity. 
So really what that means is you should be willing to pay an infinite amount of money in order to play this game. But obviously that doesn't make any sense at all. So this is almost kind of a breakdown of expected value. So this is kind of a property of expected value is that it kind of almost assumes that you have run this simulation, you know, an infinite number of times. And, you know, theoretically, you could have, you know, astronomically large winnings if you just, you know, continue to flip tails and tails and tails, and then eventually had a heads after, you know, like a million tails, right? You'd have some astronomically large amount. But the chance of that happening is so small that most likely it's never even going to happen. So from a sample of 2,084 games, it was found that the mean winnings was about $4.83. So this might be a more kind of a realistic number to kind of go by. All right, I think that finishes all the examples I wanted to talk about related to discrete distributions. So hopefully you found it helpful, and I will see you in the next video.